Uh, so, Professor, uh, it was your grand idea to uh, to put this conference together. Are you calling it a conference? What are you calling this? We call this the Renewable Energy Postgraduate Symposium. 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 And the whole idea behind the symposium was to give the postgraduate students an opportunity to speak to their peers and deliver presentations and talks on their research work in a non-threatening, friendly environment so that they can get good practice for when they go out to the big conferences. Mm, mm, mm. So, n now, I'm not going to ask you, this is the first day, I'm not going to ask you a success, whatever have you, but the things that you projected to, to, to make it more relaxed, have you achieved those goals thus far? What do you, what do you think, have, what's the participation been with the postgraduate students? Because there's a lot of postgraduate students here at the University of Fort Hare. Mm. I think in general <coughs> we've been fairly successful. We always had some students from Fort Hare to attend our our reps when we still had it in Stellenbosch as well. So mm -hmm. Fort Hare has always been involved in our program right from the start. Mm -hmm. And the students, some of the very first students we funded, we actually funded at this university as well. So, uh, um, and I think just to a large extent we've uh, achieved that, you know, where it's a friendly environment. The, the other reason we also have the conference or the symposium is that students from different universities get to meet each other because otherwise, you know, they might necessarily meet each other. And you will also find that this symposium, there are all different types of renewable technology. So from the solar guys, the wind guys, the ocean guys, the bio guys, and there's also then a lot of cross fertilization between the different um, ex expertise areas so that people can get to know each other and get passionate about renewable energy. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I. I when you when you mentioned this this cross fertilization, are, are there a lot of new ideas that are coming out, or just the, the students say, "Hey, I remember you from this," and like ten years from now they'll be doing the the uh, the, the, the ocean or the or whatever have you. What, what are you expecting? Uh, look, I, I think what's important for the renewable energy community is that we must have a common message and we must work together. So therefore, it's important that. A student working in solar photovoltaics understand CSP and understand wind and understand bioenergy so that they can see how their technology supplements the other um, contributions that, 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 that are out there. And also frequently what will happen is a student might study wind energy but end up working for a solar PV company. So that cross fertilization I think is also important to broaden the horizons of the students when they attend this conference. Now you mentioned uh, Stellenbosch uh, University which is in, in Cape Town or in Stellenbosch and, and you're mentioning Fort Hare. I mean, there's a partnership, I never knew, what's, what's this, what is this? So, uh, so we at Stellenbosch is called the, the, the hub for the National Postgraduate Program in Renewable and Sustainable Energy Studies. And in that hub we developed three spokes. And one of the spokes is the spoke in solar photovoltaics and that spoke is shared between University of Fort Hare and Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. And that's been going on for, I would say about eight years already, um, that that collaboration has been going. Um, we've came here quite a few times for visits. We've sponsored students with bursaries at this institution. And we are very close to come and install a solar resource measurement station. That's about half a million rands worth of equipment that we're going to install on the premises of this university to measure the intensity of the sun. And that information will then be made available on the web for students to, do, to download or other members of the community or, or, or industry who's interested in how much sun there is in, in Alice. Now, do you want this to go beyond these borders? That kind of information will go beyond these, the South African borders, will go static, will go... Uh, it's internationally available, it's on the web, um, it's free to the users, and we use, um, not, of course, for here, because we haven't installed a station here yet, but uh, we used um, the information on some of our other stations to update the solar map for South Africa. So the solar map that you will find outside at the um, stall of Geo Sun Africa, which is a spin-off company from Stellenbosch University, you will find a newer version of that map and it's uh, made more current because of what we call ground um, truth measurements. So you have to measure the sun at some select points and then you compare that with the satellite models to determine whether the sun was accurately projected on that point. Now, the, uh, talking internationally, a lot of times where uh, people say, well, Africa, they wait for things for the West or whatever to happen and then we follow suit. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, is this uh, is this an attempt to uh, leapfrog or, or jump ahead of the uh, of, of, of of new things, or what, how does this fit into the global kind of situation? I, I, I think there are two parts to your question. Right. So the one part of the question is that is it possible in, in in Africa to come up with technology that can be used in other parts of the world? And to that, I can definitely say yes, it is. And there we go again. So I can say that yes, it is possible to develop technology in South Africa or in Africa and export it to the rest of the world. The Helio 100 project at Stellenbosch University is a good example of that. The, the Colgate project at NMMU is a, good, is a good example of that. So it is possible to do that. Um, the question around can the African content leapfrog the the very centralized generation and strong grid model that we had before in um, in the rest of the world. I think we can, but then we should be creative about that and we should actually do that. South Africa is not well positioned to do that because we have a very strong and extensive national grid. But we are looking at countries like Tanzania, Malawi, even uh, Botswana and Namibia, where the so-called off-grid or mini-grid systems can very, very um, easily be implemented. The big issue there is payment, right? So on the African continent, people use the cell phones and they pay quite gladly for their air time, but they don't pay as gladly for their energy use yet. So we will have to instill that culture um, into our consumers that they need to pay for, for energy. So, Professor, is there a way we, people, if people want to get in touch with you or whatever, how, how they contact you? Well, the best is to start off looking at our website, and it's www.crses.sun.ac.za. So it's www.crses.sun.ac.za. And there's a host of information on our programs, our research, funding opportunities. There's a bunch of material for school kids that they can download to learn more about renewable energy. There are job opportunities advertised on there. And that's the best place to start getting, making contact with the Center for Renewable and Sustainable Energy Studies at Stellenbosch University. Thank you so very much. All right.